at what point do the Palestinians lose the ability to get a state? So hostile. I don't like the zero sum game. Right. But if you see the situation where it's like, we try to make peace with you guys. Every time you guys start war, you end up losing the war. It gets worse. At what point it's like, you've kind of, the window has closed at this point. It's time to assimilate you guys either into Israel or right. get assimilated into Egypt or Jordan or everywhere else. Being the most dangerous commentary show on Beyonce's internet comes with its own set of challenges. YouTube time and time again refuses to promote our videos because we have very controversial takes on extremely sensitive subjects. So chances are if you stumbled on this clip by accident, you'll never get to see our content again unless you hit that subscribe button. It only takes one second. But either way, we're glad you're here. And now, back to the clip. Like going back to the events of last Saturday, right? Yeah. So there's a few there's a few theories. One is that this was a failure of intelligence, uh, which for me it's very hard to grasp because I mean so. you have Mossad, you have CIA, you have like yeah. you know what uh, you have uh, you have the English. all all these people are yeah. very active right. in that area. You're telling me that uh, you know the the Gaza Strip, which is on the blockade, meaning no no weapons can come in. So so. Because I'm trying to understand, these people did not just all send each other. Was, was, this was not like a group chat type of situation. They're like, yo, by the way, on Saturday, yeah. be ready. Yeah. And then they're flying into Israel. Yeah. They're coming in, like knowing exactly which um, uh, uh, which telecommunication infrastructure to be able to destroy. So, excuse me. I don't, I don't see how Mossad had no idea, right? How did these weapons get into Gaza? How is it that like this? This is not this. They had to train to right. be able to pull something like that off. Right? How is that possible? So there is that one theory, right? Yeah. And then there is another theory that it's another thing. Like a lot of conspiracy theorists look at it, and when they say like, you know what? Maybe the Israeli government kind of wanted this to happen as a way to justify going into Gaza because there was that whole uh, there was that whole situation of. Uh, I don't know if you saw this video of Netanyahu in front of the UN with this map of Israel that had completely annexed everything, right? So looking at it, it as like, hey, you know what? Maybe maybe the Israelis wanted this to happen as a way to justify complete and utter annexation of everything around them, right? Yeah. yeah. So what do what do you so, what do you think it lands? Do you think it was it, it could be some sort of like nefarious actors on both ends, or is it just a failure of intelligence? So I don't like to always chalk up. Um, malice where co incompetence can be due, right? So mm. a lot of the times we think that people, you know, even in our own personal lives, right? They're doing, we think that they're doing something like horrible or, ma or malicious, but mm. really they're just incompetent. They're just like kind of being stupid. Right. Uh, the thing is with the Mossad, even though it's one of the most advanced intelligence agencies in the world, um, Listen, when you uh, innovate, uh, desperation breeds innovation, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, this is nothing new with Hamas or any any of the enemies of, of Israel. I mean, they've always been finding. Once we figure out one thing, they'll figure out another way to do it, right? Before mm -hmm. we knew about terror tunnels, they found they figured out how to do terror tunnels. Before they figured out how to uh, send out uh, paraglide or be paragliders, but they were selling like balloons with like incendiary bombs and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? Mm -hmm. So this operation, as from from what the IDF has released, is that this operation has actually been planned for since 2022 right wow. so we're talking about a year right in planning and mm -hmm. strategizing no no this and, was not like an overnight yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. right and it mm -hmm. was and it kind of reminds me of the yom kippur war right when in 1973 once again israel was caught off guard the uh it was the end of sukkot and it was a sabbath right so it was the end of a high holiday and it was into the sabbath day where mostly you know on days like that the the military's told yeah you know what some of you guys can go home mm -hmm. or spend time with your family they just found a real weak point and was able to uh and was able to capitalize on it same thing with uh, the iron dome too like they got smart enough when they realized oh wait there's an achilles heel of the iron dome you mm. can actually over volume it and that's what they did they send something like what seven thousand uh, yes seven thousand rockets mm -hmm. six thousand rockets something like that mm -hmm. just to give you guys context everyone remembers 2021 everybody remembers when they were spitting bullets or rockets at one another in in the same period in 10 days that hamas sent rockets was the same period that they did in one day just to show you the so it was like wow. one yeah, it was like condensed into mm -hmm. one day. The amount they did in a ten-day period—that's mm -hmm. how—that's how overwhelming that was, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't go into the conspiracies because I do like to stay factual because we go into like rabbit holes at that point, right? But I, 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 I really just think that it was the same thing that happened. But how do you feel? How do you feel about this idea of Netanyahu being in front of the UN with that map? Do you feel like that might have been something that might have? 
aggravated the situation a lot more than it should have. Could have aggravated it, yeah. I right. Mean, definitely. I mean, I mean, nothing justifies the killing of innocent yeah, women and children. Yeah. But I think for if somebody who wants peace, if the main uh, the main objective of the Israeli government is to find to create peace in the region, showing up in front of the UN with a map that says this is the new Middle East, that's not and that is not you know uh, that is not conducive to the peace that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Can I, can I yeah. ask you a question? This is the hot button question. Remember I told you I had the hot button question? <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, from 1948, 1967, 1973, mm. the first intifada, the second intifada, all the Gazan wars from 2006, 2007, uh, 2014, 2021, um, and now we're dealing with this situation in 2023. Mm. Every single time, the Arabs ended up getting the short end of that conflict, meaning that they ended up losing each one, right? Mm. In the sense that in 1948, they lost. 67, they lost. 73, they lost. First Intifada ended bad. Second Intifada, that's where the walls and the checkpoints started coming in. Mm. The situation got worse and worse and worse. Israel, to this day, has not started a single war. It mm. has not started a single war. It has never been the aggressor. Now, you could say, well, listen, you know, they're coming in, taking the home. Right. The act listen, bro, there's a big difference between we're talking about real estate disputes versus you coming with with arms trying to, you know, basically kill the yeah, other Yeah, but person. like, we don't, we don't want to water that down we, we to just our real it. estate well, dispute. My, this is this question, is deeper than that, yeah, right? Question, like it is. My question to you is this, right? And this is the hard question to ask. At what point do the Palestinians lose the ability to get a state at this point? When it's just, it's become so hostile, so hostile. I don't like the zero-sum game. Right. But if you see the situation where it's like, we try to make peace with you guys. Every time you guys start war, you end up losing the war. It gets worse, it gets worse, it gets worse. At what point do you say it's the hopes and the dreams of having a Palestinian state? At what point it's like you've kind of the 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 window has closed at this point. It's time to assimilate you guys either into Israel or right. get assimilated into Egypt or Jordan or everywhere else. I know it's a really un politically incorrect. I question. think, but see, he, he, here's 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 what I think on that matter. Yeah. I like at the I think the I think Americans the Palestinians yeah yeah lose the opportunity to have their own state. You know what I'm saying? Yeah yeah. So again, right? So I think the Palestinians have they're they're like I think the the regular day to day Palestinian. Mm -hmm. He wants just what the day-to-day -day Israeli wants. Just live in peace. You know what I mean? Have, <clears throat> have, your, have your rights, have them defended, etc. But I feel like now, in a globalist world that we live in, this has, this has, like, this has, uh, has overflowed beyond just the existence of a Palestinian state. So I think there is too many nefarious actors in the game, yeah. like Iran and, uh, you know what Even I mean? The like, US, a, bro, you I mean. know, like US, yeah, the Iran, US, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, countries like, you know, like Lebanon and stuff like that, where yeah. there is so much, like the world is so much smaller now, yeah. where it's not just about that, Pal that Palestine area. And, and and civilians are getting the brunt of it, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. And but and I feel like you were saying, I think that is going to come down to is is you need you're going to need to like. But even then, like, what do you see? Like, what are the next generation? Like, tell me the next like how many generations is going to take for these people in Gaza today to look back and be like, okay, you know what, you know, because. In, in at this place now, yeah. like you know, the mo the moment you you, you kind of gather you your thoughts together, yeah. all you're thinking about is revenge, and it's gonna be this kind of vicious cycle. How long is it gonna take what the Israelis there now to be able to forget what has happened today? Yeah, it's not even you know what I mean? like so, time. Time does heal all. I will say that I think that when people's lives are being good and it's being prosperous, and they actually have some sort of like economic mobility in their life, and mm -hmm. they can, you know they can actually have an opportunity to somewhat build a better life. Even though we got problems, you know, it's just war is not good for business, kind right, of thing, right? Exactly. And, and this is what we're seeing right now with Israel with Saudi Arabia, even the Abraham Accords, right? Yeah, yeah. When you see the UAE has uh, and Egypt have have naturalized relations, they realize, you know what? Maybe war is not really that good. Maybe it's better just to do business so right. we can all prosper at the end. Yeah, of the day. and that's why Saudi but Arabia the and the are not there yet. They're still in a place where they're so, and I get it, so marginalized. Where it's like the only thing, it's like the only upward mobility is violence it is revenge it is these things so or just see to whatever the, whatever israel is uh whatever right. israel is demanding because like you said yeah like you know if people if people are able to provide a good life for themselves and their children they're less likely to be inclined to war but when you live in gaza where you have a total blockade that makes it impossible to right. be able to conduct business that makes it impossible and that's what i was telling you when right. i used the example of my country the reason why you can get a group of young men to indiscriminately murder a million of their civ a, a million 
million of their uh, neighbors is because there is no prospect for advancement. So when you put right. people in a position where they feel like there is nothing beyond this, that's when the Hamas of this world comes in and is like, hey, look what these people have done. Look at the way we're living. And, and there is nothing else to look at and be like, there is prospect for hope there. Well, 